What is the role of your wrist on your forehand? There's a lot of information out there about what the wrist is doing on your forehand. And in the best case scenario, I find it a lot of times misleading. And in the worst case scenario, just plain wrong. Because it is very specific what you're supposed to do with the wrist when you hit your forehand. If you're doing it wrong, you're actually running the risk of not only messing up your forehands, but also you're risking injury. So that's what I want to prevent. We have to have the lag. And I'm going to show you and tell you exactly how to get it, when to get it, and what to do with it. But snap, not so much. So let's get into it, how to use the wrist in your forehand. To my mind, the number one ingredient for a good forehand and correct use of the wrist is that you don't hold the racket with the knuckles of death. You want to hold it somewhat loosely because the wrist lag will happen naturally. You don't have to force it. You have to learn to feel it, but what you don't want to do is you don't uh, have to force yourself into this position. If you hold your arm loose enough, this will happen naturally. So two tips that I was taught how hard to hold the racket. One being, imagine you have a tube of toothpaste open. Tube is open. If you squeeze too hard, <laughs> toothpaste goes everywhere. If yeah, you don't hold it enough, of course it drops. Uh, think about it another way. You have a live mouse in your hand. Of course, if you don't hold it enough, little mouse in your hand, it runs away, jumps out. If you squeeze it too tightly, not so great for the mouse. So those are two fun ways to figure out how hard to grip your racket. Now, when does the lag happen? We have our components for our forehand. So we have our unit turn, meaning I'm taking my racket up, I'm taking my racket all the way back and I let it drop. And now as I'm starting to pull forward, that is when the butt cap should be pointing to the ball. And that is called the lock in position. That signifies the end of your preparation. And from here on out, I'm pulling up and forward to my contact point. And then I have my follow through and then lastly finish. Here are the biggest words of caution. Lag all day. We need to get it. You need to get into this position. Every good forehand player has this position whether it's world-class, good college, or good recreational players. It is not that hard to achieve unless you have any kind of physical limitations and you can't do this. What I find very, very misleading and very, yeah, incorrect to my mind is when people say lag and then snap. Because yes, we're talking about laying the wrist back and I'm understanding the English language as snap here. This is a snap. So I'm having this motion and then the opposite of this motion is this. And that's not what I want. From the back, it looks like this. I have my lag. I need that. I want that. But I definitely don't want this. What I want is the lag here allows me to get under the ball and brush up here to my contact point and keeping my racket in the plane of the ball. If I'm snapping, I'm getting out of the direction of the ball and yeah, I'm shanking the ball or I'm actually hurting myself. Wrist injuries, not great. So why does the lag happen? 
and yeah, why do I need it again? So the lag happens if you have your wrist loosely enough, your entire arm loosely enough, because you have a weight here. I'm moving this weight and now I'm applying force on the inside of my handle here, grip, as I'm pulling forward. And momentarily, the weight of the tip of the racket holds it back. And because my wrist is doing this, that's what it's designed to do, it lays back, it lags back. As I'm then accelerating forward to my contact point, the tip of the racket starts to catch up with my hand until I'm making contact and now I'm perpendicular to the ball. And of course, however I'm turned, wherever my racket face is pointing when I'm making contact is where the ball goes. So that is why I need my wrist in this laid back position so I can make contact out here in front. And that has changed a little bit due to the grips. Back in the day, and I learned with a wooden racket, and actually in a continental grip, believe it or not. The contact point was out to the side and next to your hip. That is no longer true. With the grips that we teach these days that most everybody has, we want our contact point out here in front. And I can't do that if I have a straight wrist. So if I'm coming a little closer, you see that. I can't really accelerate a whole lot if I'm meeting the ball here already. I'm depriving myself of this entire space here to still accelerate to. So instead of using the snap, I would like to use the word a lot more roll, brush over the ball, whatever you want to call it. But snap to me is misleading because this is a snap to me. I don't want to do that. So as I'm done hitting the ball here, I'm actually rotating over the ball. All right, that's what we call the windshield wiper. You've probably heard that before. I'm not doing this. I'm coming around and up over the ball here. And another checkpoint is that the butt cap points to you right now as the viewer. Or the palm faces to the outside. The side with which I made contact follows through and points to the outside. That is when I know that I didn't do this because I see a ton of clients. Because trust me, I'm a doctor. I'm a tennis coach and I see a lot of clients doing this. That is the snap that we don't want. We want the roll with your entire arm over the ball. So let me show you a couple of drills. And this is my trusty Topspin Pro, I know, shameless plug, but this thing really helps for people to start feeling the lag. It also helps tremendously with finding the distance. So again, if I don't set my wrist back, if I don't lay my wrist back and I keep it fully extended in a neutral position here, here's what happens. I can't make contact in front. Well, I can, but see what happens? I'm actually getting out of the plane of the ball. I'm gonna shank it to my left. So laying that wrist back, I'm now able to stay behind the ball and brush up. So again, if I were to snap, I'm gonna hit the Topspin Pro and I'm gonna make it fall. So I'm coming under the ball here and I'm brushing up and I don't have to do it fast at all. I'm gonna show you two other drills if you don't have the Topspin Pro. So just here. Now you see, I'm just gonna let my racket go. Just roll over and then I finish with the rhino nose high and away from my face. I can finish over my biceps, I can finish over my shoulder, I can finish like Rafa, or I can finish over my hip even, depending on what kind of ball I wanna send. But essential again, is that I get the wrist lag pointing to the ball here, and then I brush over. Another reason why I find that snap so misleading is, I can manipulate the ball with my body position, of course with my grip, with my swing shape, if I hit a slice I manipulate it, or I manipulate it with a topspin. But I cannot 
manipulate the ball at contact point because it is so fast. It's 0.000 something seconds. No human being is fast enough. And I do see this one coach who talks a lot about psh, psh. and maybe it's because he's training only with world-class absolute geniuses, but a mere mortal? No, you cannot do that because it's just happening too fast. We can't even see it with our human eye. Our eyes don't work that fast. So keep brushing up to the ball, lay it back. That's great. But then don't snap it, roll over it. So Michael, when I watch the pros, I do see movement in the wrist. And yeah, you see movement in the wrist, but you only see it after they make contact, long after they make contact, which translates into 0.00 whatever seconds, because again, it goes so fast. You do see this, but that comes again more from your entire elbow. And because you hold the racket so loose, now again, the weight of the racket pulls and it pulls so that the side with which you hit faces to the outside. So you can wave goodbye. You can think about having a wristwatch on the inside here and look at it. That's one way. Or you make it as a checkpoint, the butt cap points to your opponent. So twice you want to see the butt cap here and then here. Okay, so what I've done is I've just taken a slightly older ball and I'm able to squeeze it into the fence here. So try that. If I'm keeping my wrist in a neutral position, meaning it's not bent, flexed, moved in any way, and now I want to make contact, the tip of my racket actually makes contact with the fence first. And you see that my racket face is pointing this way. So I'm having more of a horizontal motion and I have zero of that vertical motion that I need to get some topspin. Now for me to get the ball actually straight on, which is what I want to do, I would have to go into this position. You see here, now my wrist can stay in this position. But again, I'm hitting the ball out to the side, too far away from me, and I have to use a lot of my shoulder here. That here puts strain on my shoulder and I don't want that. So just seen from the back, if I have my wrist lag, now I can come up and make contact with the racket face pointing to where I want to go. If I'm holding my wrist in a neutral position, I can send it straight on if I'm in this position here, which again is not ideal. If I continue to swing with a neutral grip, now you do see that really clearly that my racket face points this way. Another way to start feeling the wrist lag is simply fix a towel or a string or rope, whatever you have, to the fence and mimic your stroke. If I keep my wrist, again, in a neutral position, I have to use all of this here. And me, as a former shoulder injured, injury, whatever, somebody who had shoulder injuries, that doesn't feel great. I have to muscle that. Doesn't feel good. But if I'm doing this, I just naturally let my wrist be pulled back. So I see the inside here of the wrist. Now another slightly out of left field tip, which I use with little kids, and they get it, trust me. It's the Spider-Man. Okay, we're shooting the web forward, which yes, technically I think he's shooting it that way, so don't, don't nail me down on that one too much. But it totally gets them into laying that wrist back here. So imagine you're Spider-Man and you lay that wrist back and then, yeah, you have to go So if you now don't know how to use your wrist, I really don't know. And you can work on that with a simple progression when you're by yourself. You can simply toss the balls, that's perfectly fine. So if you wanna start in this position, I'm just tossing the ball, 
and now I'm just trying to meet the ball by moving forward and up. I'm pulling up to contact point and I'm doing that super loose. I'm not doing that hard at all. Very gentle. And then I'll just roll over the ball. If you like my contact, make sure that you're subscribing. Also click on the bell symbol because then you know that I'm putting new content out. I'm also on Instagram. You can follow me there and I'll see you on one of these channels really soon.